So this project actually turned out to be quite a bit of fun. Um, mostly what I was doing on this project, you see it's rocking over there. So nothing was parallel to each other, not the sides, not the back, not the front, top, bottom or anything. So it was a lot of, you know, really precise measurements and shimming and uh, getting the angles right with cutting to make sure that this thing uh, came up nice and true. Um, the directions I had on it was to basically, you know, just get the, the top deck um, looking like it was brand new. Uh, however, saying that, I did have to uh, start on the bottom here and get this bottom actually cut down. And one thing I do have to say about this large cutter is uh, when it actually came up to the point uh, where it was getting some pressure on it, it lifted the spindle up. Um, and I was saying this because my DRO on the spindle would be at 9, then it would go up to 8, then up to 7. And by the time I got down to the other side, it, it would, uh, you know, just not be where it is. And this doesn't happen on the smaller tools, just a larger one. Um, and again, you seen just a little while back there, there was, uh, it dug in quite a bit on, on that, on that cut. And as such, it uh, actually blew the circuit and I couldn't actually find a fuse for it on the weekend. And I ended up just putting some, uh, tinfoil on the fuse I had. Uh, and again, looking at this, um, that level is very precise and overall you know it's, it's not much this thing is actually off even though the level shows it so right there that that is off one bubble so if it, if, if it was true it would be off a half bubble each way and that's like you know i think 0. 0.0005 or even finer than that uh and again uh when i put that tinfoil on that little fuse uh it, 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 the, the metal machine stopped and I thought oh great I've done some serious damage here and I opened it up and I was looking around I couldn't see anywhere where it was you know burnt wires or anything like that so I took the fuse out and looked at it and sure enough the uh, tempo actually slipped off the top of it, even though I wrapped it uh, so that was that I waited till I could actually get the proper fuses before continuing on on this you know at this point here it's uh, coming along pretty good and just uh, taking some of the burrs off now and getting ready to actually start doing some of the milling on it. The, the one corner on this stale is, is a bit rough. I did not feel that it should keep, see, keep going down on it when I definitely had enough to, you know, put that down flat on, on the bottom with that vise and tighten it up to work on the top. And, and the only reason that the, the bottom got done was so I could work on the top. It wasn't part of the, uh, part of the actual milling pro project here. Anyways, that turned out rather nice on the bottom. It does look a little scratchy there, but it's pretty damn flat. Uh, the first thing I did on this was just come off the horn, um, coming up to that upper deck on the anvil, and just uh, started cleaning that area there off. Uh, there was a, a really deep uh, gouge in there where I think someone hit it with the uh, grinder when they were making this or cutting that part of it. And I ended up not taking the whole gouge out because it was really, really deep in there. And it would have uh, really affected the look of this anvil cutting it that much. However, um, this this part of it cleaned up pretty nice. For the most part here, I'm just trying to get a nice flat edge on, on that lip there uh, going up to that main deck. And after that, it's just a matter of cleaning off the... Uh, the, the bottom of the material there that's going into that horn. Uh, when I did do this, it did take off, you know, a, 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 a quite a bit of material actually, and, and it left quite the edge going into that horn. And, and I talked to the owner of this piece and said, Hey, like, what do you want me to do here? You know, we can, we can sand it all down and machine it all down. Or I, I can just come up uh, from that point, you know, on about a 25, 30 degree angle. And just taper it off into the horn and uh, the, the person on this was a surprise that i was able to you know do that taper job I thought that was probably the best idea uh in, instead of going down and starting you know continue cutting and cutting and cutting and getting things down so that's the, the route that we decided that we're going to go on on this project um again you know i i, I talked about these high speed bits i had and I just don't care much for them um, as far as cutting steel goes. 
uh, you can see there that gouge is in this thing and it, like I said it's, it's quite deep um, I did manage to take a fair bit of that off uh, but there was still a tiny little bit of a gouge in there that would have required you know four or five more passes to actually cut down uh, from from there you know we're just getting the sides parallel to each other um, which fairly easy to do right just a matter of flipping that thing in the vise and doing one side and then the other side. And of course, all the numbers are on the DRO to see uh, how deep it actually has to cut. And, and I was quite surprised because looking at this, it did look like that whole top was off a bit angle-wise. But uh, when we are cutting it, it, uh, it came true really quick with very little material coming off of it. So after cutting the, the two sides, you know, then it was onto the top and uh, getting everything. So it was uh, flat. Uh, I, I, again, with this, you know, three inch cutter, it's, uh, it's really weird. It's the only cutter I have, like the two inch and the one inch of uh, same make as this do not do this, but this three inch cutter will actually lift that spindle or at least the DRO in the handle says it's lifting that spindle when it's cutting. Um, if, if someone knows why it's doing that I'd, I'd really appreciate uh, if you let me know uh, especially why it's only I, I imagine it's only doing it with the one because you know you, you got such a larger surface area that you're actually cutting at the same time and my only guess is it's just too much resistance on a small machine to to cut but it's, it's, it's actually not cutting in that deep and you can see when we take it out here uh, that is milled but there are some uh, rather deep cuts going across the top of it there and when i say deep cuts i'm just saying deep cuts for 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 a finished milling job you know this the size came out so much nicer so when I talked to the owner, I, I showed him what was going on there and asked him, you know, where do you want to proceed? And I said, you know, what would really look good is if we just cleaned up the, the front and back on the base uh, just to give it a nice shiny look and, you know, leave everything else in. And we also talked about cleaning up the uh, the arcs underneath the anvil itself or in the middle of the anvil. And he didn't want to because he wanted to keep that kind of trap art look to it. And I, and I totally agree, like, Clean it up, you would have got rid of uh, where the cutting torch went through it and where there's big globs of weld on top of it and everything else. But uh, on the, on this, I, I don't know what possessed me to use my one, two, three blocks to block that thing in. I uh, won't be doing that again. I don't, don't think I hurt those one, two, three blocks, but I'm sure just a, a piece of stock is a way better idea to block that in and not using a precision instrument as stuffing to keep something in place in a vice uh but again at, at the time i just was not thinking about that whatsoever and that's what i used you know now when everything came down you, you can see the the vice actually wiggling a bit there so what i did is i put a bar under and a bar on top and that stiffened the vice right up on the table and you know allowed me to put a little more force on it with the files and you know with the sand and on the top um decided to you know try to get some of those gouges out of there and get it smooth unfortunately though just using that sander was not the trick so on the front of this um those are tapered in just a little bit on the sides and of course right now that's like a half inch carbide bin on there and we're just cleaning up that front for you know final presentation on it and tapering it back into the the horn on the front um with, with i think it was like probably a 10 to 12 degree taper on there I, I i can't remember offhand from what we use but i did use like wedges on there and it got that blocked up in the vice at a, across at uh, the same angle to cut that down it turned out pretty nice uh when everything was said and done that uh, that front part looked really natural. The, the angles just flowed in it, and uh, it, it looked like that's how it was made day one. 
So next, this is the this is the tape part. And it's on the rotary base there, and I think it's about two to three degrees on both sides that I cut in, um, just to you know just to follow the the material that was already there. Um, I, I did not really want to go all the way from the very back of that anvil, you know, and, and have to take off, you know, a few thousands all the way down just to make that whole thing flush. So just decided to uh, just taper that front in. And, you know, you, you can see um, by, by the, the table, it, it was squared to the, the slots on the table, and that slot was just slightly off. Um, next, you know, we're just tidying up the, uh, the front and the back here. And now the fun begins, uh, getting a little bit of oil on there and, uh, going to start lapping this thing. Um, I started with 400 grit and, you know, within about 30 seconds realized that I had to run over to the hardware store and, and get a much, uh, more gritty stone because that 400 grit would have taken me like 12 hours to, to, to get that thing actually uh, to the point where I could start cutting down with a tighter grips or grit on the, on the stones. And I th the thing at this set, I got it's 400 and a thousand and 3000 and like 7,000. And that's really excessive going to the 7,000, but like three hours later, there it is. Like you can see the front part of the horn there with a little bit of the angle coming up. That was actually polished behind it. 